Hey everyone, Twinkle, Twinkle Little Star. So we always wondered what they are, but now, based on what we know of the HR diagram, we know exactly who they are. We know there's main sequence stars, we know there's white dwarfs, we know there's red giants. How do we piece together the life cycle of a star? Well, we can look at the life cycle of a star, you can compare it to people, and we can look at people and tell how old they are as they go through uh, time. So why not make a lot of observations of stars and be able to do the same thing? So when we look at all the stars out there in the universe, we look for the ingredients in the star. We said that was hydrogen and helium. So if we want to see where stars come from, we look for places where there's an abundance of hydrogen and helium. And what are we seeing here? Well, what we're seeing is a lot of dust and gas, probably a lot of hydrogen, and uh, it wants to come together by a gravitational force. Uh, when you do that, you start to form something called a nebula. It's just a cloud of dust and gas that forms from gravitational pull. And that gas and dust, the gases, hydrogen, helium, maybe some other heavier elements, but the dust we're talking about is not the dust that's in the room. It's bits of carbon and silicon, these heavier elements that may be present in these clouds. So like you said, gravity is what brings all this together, and as gravity collapses the cloud, the cloud's going to increase in pressures and temperatures. Yeah, when it gets hot enough, what will happen is a very special process called fusion, which will make a star actually form at the center. So like there's these little locations inside these nebulas where you can see the gas accumulating in dense, dense regions. And in those dense regions, if we zoom in on them, we can see that those knots that have kind of clumped together start to spiral, start to spin, and we see, like you said, these little baby stars form. Those little white dots there are newly formed stars, which makes sense why we have a lot of binary star systems. They're really cute, by the way. So you can see all these stars forming together. I already see maybe 10, 12 stars forming in this region, but some of them are being ejected. And what does that mean for these stars that are being ejected from this nebula? Well, they're not gonna be part of a binary system, right? They're gonna be an individual star and they're gonna move through space by themselves. Kind of like our sun does. Mm -hmm. So now what we see is we see this blob of gas spiraling around and you see this star forming at the center. And like you said, this is what we call a protostar. Where is the star in this picture? Well, it'll be in the center of all this uh, activity here, the bright, shining object at the middle. Right at the center is our star, and then what's around the star? Well, uh, a lot of uh, materials that might form a solar system at some point. So it's leftover gas and dust that didn't form the actual stars, which is, makes sense why we get gas giant planets mm -hmm. and things like that. So like you said, to make a protostar, we know that the process that's basically begins a star is known as nuclear fusion. That outward pressure from the fusion is canceled by the inward pull of gravity. So gravity is what holds the stars together as fusion tries to blow the star apart. Yeah, this is a really important process. It has to get hot enough from all that pressure uh, to actually form a star. When we talk about hot enough, we're talking about 15 million degrees at the center. If you can get that hot, then what you can do is you can take four hydrogen atoms and squeeze them, fuse them into one helium atom. But you can see there's a couple other things that come out of it. There's an electron, there's a couple neutrinos, and most importantly, energy. Where does the energy come from? Yeah, the energy comes from the fact that we're missing some mass from that fusion process. If you add up four hydrogens, you get 4.032 in the atomic mass of four hydrogens, helium has a mass of 4.0026 in its atomic mass. So there's a little bit less in making the helium than you began with with the hydrogen, and therefore something's got to emerge, which is energy. And that energy comes from that missing mass, which comes from that guy's famous equation. E equals mc squared. So you take the mass and multiply by the speed of light squared and you get tremendous amounts of energy. So this is when a star is born. A protostar, a baby star, is when fusion ignites in its core. So what happens when that process kind of levels out? Once the fusion process, because I would think that, was pretty, that would be pretty volatile. So what happens when it becomes more stable? So once the fusion becomes stable, we see that most stars live, remember, in that main sequence, that main stretch down the HR diagram. 
and you can see the sun burns at a pretty hot temperature and has a pretty average brightness. Yeah, I see it looks like it's around 6,000 degrees Kelvin. That 6,000 remember is the surface temperature of the star, it's not the core temperature. That is correct. So stars like Bernard's star and Proxima Centauri are cooler than the sun and a lot less luminous. So they're probably smaller than the sun and they're burning cooler than the sun. What does that mean for its life cycle? Well, they generally last longer because they're not burning as hot. Um, the, the hotter stars uh, burn much more quickly. So Spica, on the other hand, is a really hot star and it's probably very massive. That means much more gravity squeezing those gases, making it much hotter in the core than our own sun, which is going to burn through the fuel much, much quicker. But they are all still on that main line there, so they're all still main sequence stars, the main part of their life, and have a stable existence at that particular point. I want to talk about how long a star is going to last. Looking at the size of our sun and calculating the mass of our sun, our sun's going to stick around for about 10 billion years. Which, believe it or not, is pretty average. Which is around halfway of its life yeah. already. Yeah. Something like Bernard's star though, or Proxima Centauri, they're going to live a lot longer. They may live hundreds of billions of years. Trillions of years even. Mm -hmm. What about Spica? Not a long time. They, just a few million probably. If so that. The hotter you are, the faster you're going to burn, the faster you're going to go through your main sequence. But you're going to live your life converting hydrogen to helium and producing lots and lots of energy. But what happens when we run out of that fuel? That's the next question. So now we're into the red giant phase of our sun's life. This is kind of like when the star starts to go into the throes of death, starting to die. It's not really dead yet, but it's on its way. So once hydrogen fusion's done, that means the outward pressure's gone, and the only thing left for the star is its own mass and gravity. And so that'll cause the star to start to collapse which will mean it will start to burn different substances. So it's going to burn at a hotter temperature and hotter pressures inside the sun. And when that happens, now you can get hydrogen outside the core to start burning. That's true, which means that now eventually what will happen is, since you're burning at a hotter temperature, the inner pressure starts to push more than the gravitational force, and it starts to expand. So our sun starts to expand from its current size to about the size of Earth's radius. Yeah, so it'll eat the inner planets, basically, uh, as it grows into what's called a red giant. And in the process, as we have that shell burning on the outside, we also have what we call helium burning on the inside. Eventually, the pressures and temperatures get hot enough that helium starts to fuse. And when helium combines, the helium will fuse into elements of carbon and oxygen. So those heavier elements on the periodic table are now being made in the hearts of these red giant stars. This is a process that all stars go through. They all reach this point where they begin to expand. So all stars start as nebulas. Those nebulas collapse, create protostars when fusion starts. After fusion starts, we've got main sequence where it just burns throughout the main or remainder of its life, converting hydrogen to helium. Then when the hydrogen's gone, it expands into this red giant, now burning helium in its core instead of the hydrogen. But once that's all done, depending on how big you are, we're going to have two different ways that a star can actually die. I think that's a story for the next video. Sounds like a story for next time. See ya.